Hola y bienvenidos a Lightspeed Spanish and welcome to this very short lesson on por y para. Who has problems with por y para? Just about everybody. Why? Because we don't have two different words for for in our own language. That's the problem. We have no frame of reference. And so in this lesson, we're going to look at a very specific way that por and para is used. So let's start off with a quiz. Take a look at this quiz. There are four sentences, two of which must use para and two of which must use por. Which ones need para and which ones need por? If you need to look at these sentences a little bit more, just pause the video while you read them. So let's talk about por and para. Now, first of all, I want you to understand that when you are making a comparison and you want to say, for being such and such, you're not very blah, blah. When we use that kind of for, we are making a comparison. For being this, you're not very this, yeah? That for, how you're gonna remember it is this word, comparison, comparison. Because when you're making a comparison like that, you're gonna use para. So for example, if I wanted to say, for being a fireman, you're not very brave, are you? I would say, para ser, and notice that we always just stick the whole verb on after para because it's a preposition, that's what you have to do. Para ser bombero, no eres muy valiente, ¿verdad? Para ser bombero, no eres muy valiente, ¿verdad? So, I'm making a comparison between his strength and the fact he's a fireman, and I'm using para because that's the comparison. Another example would be, um, para ser americano, no eres muy alto. For being an American, you're not very tall, because we all think Americans are tall. So that's your comparison. So when you're making the for, for being, you're gonna use para. Now let's have a look at por. Now, por, is all about in the in the the part that we're looking at is all about the reason why okay the reason why when we say why in spanish we say por qué por appears in the why question because por is all about the reason okay so when we say this sentence in english because he's a soldier he's very fit okay because he's a soldier. When we do this, because he's a soldier, in Spanish that's por ser, okay? Por ser. And that's because of being a soldier. He's something. That's when we say por ser, por ser. For example, por ser muy joven, tiene mucha energía. Because of being young, he's got lots of energy. Por ser muy joven, tiene mucha energía. So that's the difference. Now, sometimes we can get confused about those two. Are we saying for being young, or are we saying because of being young, or because he's young? Typically in English we'll say, because he's young, he has lots of energy. And in Spanish they use por ser, okay? Uh, obviously, you can use other verbs as well, okay? So, we have para ser, and that's a comparison, and that's the for being. And then we have por ser, and that's because he or she is, okay? So, that's two ways that we use por and para that are very similar, but they're very different when we use them. So, in a moment, we'll go back to the quiz and we'll give you your answers. But just before that, we'd like to show you one of our books that is available from Amazon, and that is Pocket Por y Para. And this is a book that is incredibly popular because it's an easy read and it just really helps you to get Por and Para absolutely flying in formation. This book's available from all outlets of Amazon. So now let's answer the quiz. Which two of these sentences needs to have por and which two of these sentences needs to have 
para. Well, if you've listened to the lesson, I think you know this. So, for being a man, you aren't very strong. Well, that one is a comparison, isn't it? And so we're going to use para. And that sentence would be, para ser hombre, no eres muy fuerte. And what about the next one? For being a teacher, you don't like people very much, do you? Again, another comparison. And so we use para. Para ser profesor, no te gusta la gente mucho, ¿verdad? Para ser profesor. And then what about the other two? Because of being a man, you are strong. Well, now we've got a because of. That also could be because you're a man. You're very strong. And we know that por is about because. That's the reason. So that would be por ser hombre, tú eres fuerte. Por ser hombre, eres fuerte. And because of being a teacher, you like people. Okay, or because you're a teacher, you like people. So are we going to use para o por? Well, we're going to use por. Por ser profesor, te gusta la gente. Por ser profesor, te gusta la gente. So there you are. I hope that's been valuable. That's just a little snippet of what's available with por and para. But as they say, from small acorns, great oak trees grow. So, hasta la próxima vez, chicos. Muchas gracias por estar con nosotros. Hasta luego.